Always listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit within you. First Bible Lesson, John chapter 4 verse 24 God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Second Bible Lesson, Galatians chapter 5 verse 16 This I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Golden Text, Acts chapter 10 verses 19 to 21 While Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. Arise therefore, and get thee down, and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Then Peter went down to the men which were sent unto him from Cornelius, and said, Behold, I am he whom ye seek, what is the cause wherefore ye are come? Brethren, that is the revelation of our lesson this morning. In the past people thought that the Holy Spirit was in heaven. Many people regarded him as a thing of fable. At the moment we have seen from our lesson what is meant by the working of the Holy Spirit. When your mind is disturbed, the Spirit directs you right ahead on what to do. The Spirit said to Peter, Have no doubt for I am the one sending you. Do you not know that the particular Spirit working in you is the urge that directs your affairs? Whatever the Holy Spirit directs you to do, do not doubt, act upon it. Our Lord Jesus Christ was killed in the flesh but He lives in the Spirit. Whenever somebody speaks to you, know that it is the Holy Spirit that speaks and not the speaker. All those who are the children of God listen to this Spirit. God is a Spirit and all those who worship Him must worship Him in Spirit and in Truth. It does not only end with your having the Holy Spirit, but you have to also listen to Him and act according to His directives. The Holy Spirit is God the Creator. He is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords and the long-expected Comforter whom you have been waiting for. He who believes in Him is safe, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. It is not the shaking of the head alone that makes one worship God. It is only when you behave according to the directives of the Holy Spirit, when He tells you to pray, you pray, when He tells you to sing, you sing, when He tells you to prophesy, you prophesy. When he forbids you from doing a particular thing you stop doing that immediately, for Christ himself walked in spirit. You are witnesses that when he was possessed by the Holy Spirit he was led into the wilderness. There was no single thing he did by himself, he was always listening to the Holy Spirit. The Spirit directed him to go into the desert, it was not because he liked it but he had to obey his call. Our trouble is that we do not believe that the Spirit that lives in us is God who created heaven and earth. That is why we do not have peace in our lives. How can we please God when we do not listen to Him? He teaches you about the mysteries of the kingdom but you do not listen to Him. That is why a lot of people are unable to perform this work, for flesh and blood cannot please God. If you live according to the directives of the flesh you will surely die. Christ did not please himself but he listened to the Holy Spirit. All the apostles, James, Peter, John, to mention a few did not please themselves but they listened to the Holy Spirit. There are certain places where you go to and the Spirit urges you not to say a word and you have to obey him. Always do whatsoever the Holy Spirit wants you to do. There may be a time when the Holy Spirit urges you to go on ministry journey to up to five stations, you have to obey. What I am telling you, all of you are living witness that the Spirit comes to dwell in every one of you so that you might be inheritors of His kingdom. Our Lord Jesus Christ emphatically said that God is a Spirit and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. But for those who profess to be children of God but indulge in fornication and adultery and other vices, are led by the evil spirit. Therefore brethren do not regard God as man, tree, Beelzebub. He is nothing but the true Spirit of God. Our Lord Jesus did not say that God is a man or ghost but he said that God is a spirit. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Nevertheless I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away, for if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you, but if I depart, I will send him unto you. John chapter 16 verse 7 The question now is has that Comforter come? Since that time he has always been here but people did not believe in him. How can you claim to be the child of God when you do not believe in the existence of the Holy Spirit? All of us are the school children but we are not in a carnal school. We are scholars of God by listening to Spirit only. That is why we must pray always. After you have prayed, sit down and listen to His voice. 
As we are scholars of God we do not have to do anything by ourselves. We are his little children. As children we cannot do anything by ourselves except what the Father tells us to do. Any disobedient child will not receive any good thing from his father. A lot of us suffer because we disobey God. Many of us disobey the directives of the Holy Spirit and as a result we suffer untold hardship, praying for life and death and yet we cannot find any because we disobey the Holy Spirit. There are many things we have to do for him and there are also many things he wishes to teach us, as our Lord Jesus Christ bore witness about him. Read your Bibles from Genesis to Revelation as much as you like but if you are not led by the Holy Spirit, it avails you nothing. This is because it was written through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit it is the Holy Spirit alone who can give accurate interpretation. That is why our Lord Jesus Christ said that if a man is not born of water and spirit he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. There is no person who knows the mind of God except the Holy Spirit. At times you may say I am very worried. I do not know what is wrong with me, why do you have a disturbed mind? It is because you fail to listen to the Holy Spirit. We are not annoyed when somebody offends us, neither are we annoyed when we offend ourselves, but we are annoyed because we fail to listen to the dictates of the Holy Spirit. Whether you have money or not it is not your problem. Whether you are healthy or sick, it does not affect you. But whenever you fail to listen to the directives of the Holy Spirit trouble comes in. Even if you fill this Pentecostal hall with money and other precious things and you are still unhappy know that you have not listened to the Holy Spirit within you. At times you ask yourselves, I have acquired wealth and all worldly pleasures, why am I still unhappy? Know from this that you have failed to listen to and act according to the dictates of the Holy Spirit. The peace that the world is fighting, struggling, and spending money to get all hung on listening to the Holy Spirit. If you listen to the Holy Spirit you will find that you feel very happy, you are content and that you have no more worries. This is the reign of the Holy Spirit and there is no other force in heaven and on earth that can oppose or challenge him. The Father does not reign, neither the Son, except the Holy Spirit. If you want good health, listen to the Holy Spirit, whatever he tells you, act accordingly and you will have your desires met. Do not look for power from the Sun, Moon, secret societies native doctors etc. Listen to the Spirit and He will give you the ultimate power. If you want to acquire all the godly virtues, love, strength, wisdom, act according to the instructions of the Holy Spirit and you will get them all. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, If ye love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and He shall give you another Comforter, that He may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. John chapter 14 verses 15 to 17. Is the Holy Spirit not living in your heart? Have you not heard when he speaks to you? At times he tells you to knock your head on the ground and if you refuse you receive a heavy punishment. How can you live in peace if you are not walking according to directives of the Holy Spirit? Sometimes you pray to God to give you the Holy Spirit. He is here, He is all over your body. To get the Holy Spirit does not require prayer, nor fasting because He is here with you already. The trouble of the world is that they do not believe in the existence of the Holy Spirit. What brings calamity, hardship, untold suffering to humanity is because the Holy Spirit has come down to dwell with mankind but the world does not believe in Him. It is not necessary to go to the river bank to fast and pray, calling on the name of Jesus or Elijah in order to get the Holy Spirit. He is within you. All you need to do is to listen to Him and act according to His instructions. Many people complain that they are not educated and as such they cannot do the work of God. The work of God does not require academic attainment. All you have to do is to listen to the Holy Spirit. There is nothing on earth that pleases God more than for one to listen to the Spirit and act according to His instructions. That is why we should not be noisy, we should not fight and quarrel so that we would be able to tune into His voice when He speaks to us. When you are unhappy and something disturbs your mind sit down quietly and listen to the Holy Spirit within you and all your problems will be solved. Do not emulate others but listen to the Holy Spirit. When someone gives you advice, do not rush and give immediate reply, listen to the Holy Spirit for an immediate answer. 
As the result of your disobedience to the dictate of the Holy Spirit, you are now indulging in all vices. Anytime you come before me you confess the same sin over and over again simply because you do not listen to the Holy Spirit. If you listen to the Holy Spirit within you, you will be spotless of sin, and you will make no mistakes whatsoever. If you possess the whole world and you do not listen to the Holy Spirit, what is your gain? Conversely, if you walk according to the dictates of the Holy Spirit and the whole world is against you know that you have gained your salvation. But I am telling you that there is nothing you can do to please man or the world. This is so because man is never content, he is ever demanding, and until eternity, you will never be able to satisfy man's requirements. Ananias heard of how Saul persecuted the church and when the Holy Spirit urged him to go and offer prayers for Saul he argued and said, Lord I have heard, by many, of this man how much evil he had done to the saints at Jerusalem and he had authority from the high priest to bind all that call on thy name. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way for he is a chosen vessel unto me. Acts chapter 9 verses 13 to 15. Be careful when the Holy Spirit directs you to deliver a vision or prophesy do not add or subtract, give exactly as the Spirit instructs you. He is the God of love, the God of peace and the God of forgiveness. Whatever difficulty or problem confronts you, put it before him and he will solve it for you. It is pitiful and blasphemous to hear how certain people say that God will not come down from heaven to do a particular thing for you. If God does not come down in person to do that particular thing for you who else do you think would do such a thing for you? Everything you see in the world and all the events happening thereby it is God alone who is responsible. Whatever God does not do, nobody else can do it. The downfall of both the whites and the blacks is that they do not listen to the Holy Spirit. Remember when Peter drew his sword in defense of our Lord Jesus Christ and Christ rebuked Peter saying, He who lives by the sword shall perish by the sword. I have power to pray and my Father would send legions of angels to come and fight, but if I do so how would the glory of my Father be manifested? Matthew chapter 26 verses 51 to 54 Do you not remember when King Hezekiah received a letter from the king of Assyria that he was going to wage war with him? To this end King Hezekiah took the letter and he placed it on the altar of God telling God in his prayers that such was direct challenge to him. While he was praying in the altar, God sent a message to him through prophet Isaiah that the king of Assyria and his subjects would never set their feet in his territory. God sent one angel to the Assyrian camp and he destroyed the Assyrian camp while the king himself took refuge in Nineveh. See 2 Kings chapter 19 verses 19 to 35. Now in your ignorance you claim that God will not come down in person to save you from trouble, if he will not come down who would save you, give you peace, food, life and all the blessings you desire from him. First Bible lesson, John chapter 4 verse 24 God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The manifestation of the Holy Spirit is always among the children of God, the Holy Spirit is the only source by which we can please God. God is a spirit and he is in you, he is in your house, and he is omnipresent. The spirit is an entity which is present everywhere. He hears our utterances, confidential conversations, and he knows our heart's meditation though he remains invisible. At times we do certain things claiming that God does not see us, not knowing that we are deceiving ourselves. Even where no human being had ever been, like in the sun, God exists there. It is not the building of magnificent buildings for God, nor going along the street shouting Jesus. Jesus. It is neither going from house to house preaching Jesus that would bring us salvation. But salvation is gained by listening to the Holy Spirit. It is when we sit down quietly and listen to the instructions of the Holy Spirit and act upon them and then we get the desired peace and salvation. The scripture says, Today if you hear his voice harden not your hearts. Hebrews chapter 3 verse 15. Today the Holy Spirit can call upon you to go to the hospital to offer prayers for the sick ones, do not resist. Sometimes we do certain things unconsciously and if we are asked to explain the reason for such actions we cannot explain. Therefore let us surrender ourselves entirely to the control of the Holy Spirit. Do not think of what you will eat or what you will wear. Do not say that people do not love you or that you are an orphan or a widow or that you have no relations. Brethren, do you not know that the spirit that dwells in you is your mother, father, and all in all for you? 
let us not doubt the existence of the Holy Spirit as Thomas did. He said that he would not believe that our Lord Jesus Christ was resurrected until he sees him with his naked eyes and puts his hands in the wounds, before he would believe. Did you not know that God is a spirit and all those who worship him must do so in spirit and in truth? The disciples told Thomas of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ but he did not believe until our Lord Jesus Christ appeared unto him and told him to come and thrust his finger into his wounds. Our Lord Jesus Christ remarked, Blessed are they that have not seen, and yet have believed. John chapter 20 verse 29 Abraham worshipped God in spirit and in truth. That was what moved him to try to sacrifice his only son Isaac to God. Why did Sarah push Ishmael? the son of a slave woman, out of her house. It was the Holy Spirit who instructed her. When Abraham returned and was informed of the incident he was infuriated but the Spirit instructed him not to be annoyed because it was the wish of the Spirit that they should be expelled from the family, rather Abraham should bless them. Brethren as you have heard this sermon if you listen to the Holy Spirit within you, then your joy will be eternal. Somebody may offend you and immediately you are about to get annoyed. If you stop to listen to the still small voice of the Holy Spirit within you, he will be telling you to love your enemies. You will therefore not be annoyed anymore. If your property gets lost, and you are worried, just knock your head on the ground and the Holy Spirit will console you. If you read the Holy Bible from Genesis to Revelation daily, you will never forsake sin of any form until you listen to the Holy Spirit which is within you. The flesh is always proud but the Holy Spirit is humble and gives peace. Brethren you have been in brotherhood for so many years say for 20 years or more and you have not got what you wanted. This is because you do not walk according to the directives of the Holy Spirit for all those who walk according to the directives of the Holy Spirit are given the power to be sons of God. What will the Holy Spirit teach you? He will teach you to forsake the vices of your former life. Flesh and blood cannot preach the gospel to any person except the Holy Spirit is in him. That is why our Lord Jesus Christ said, I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Habit when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. John chapter 16 verses 12 and 13. Second Bible lesson, Galatians chapter 5 verse 16 This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The powerful work of the Holy Spirit, he who does not walk according to the directives of the Holy Spirit would not be able to please God. If we live according to the desires of the flesh we are bound to die. For the flesh indulges in adultery, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulation, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies, envy, murder, drunkenness and other vices. If we walk in spirit we will not do those things that we know do not please the Holy Spirit, but we will only be doing things that are pleasing to the Holy Spirit. Many people say, I want to do the work of God, I want to do spiritual work. What is the work of God and what is spiritual work? The work of God and spiritual work depend on how you obey the Holy Spirit which is within you. If you are directed by the Spirit of God you cannot commit any sin. You keep requesting God to give you wealth and other material things. What is your gain if you possess all these things and yet you lose your soul in hellfire? Have you remembered the story of the young rich man and how he built a store filled with wealth and said to himself, My soul come and rest and enjoy, but God said to him thou fool, thy soul is demanded of thee. Then who shall enjoy all this wealth he acquired? It is exactly like the man who amassed all the wealth of this world but does not listen to the Spirit. God is a master who sends someone on an errand and goes before and behind him. When he sent Ananias to Saul he also communicated to Saul that Ananias was coming to him. Also when he sent Cornelius to Peter he in turn informed Peter that Cornelius was coming to him. Before the Holy Spirit directs you to go to a particular place he had already communicated with such a person before your arrival thus you experience no difficulty. The Holy Spirit can move you to go around these premises while you are sick. Know that whenever you obey without complaining you will be well. There is nothing the Holy Spirit will direct you to do that will bring shame and disgrace to you. If we love ourselves and our lives, let us walk according to the directives of the Holy Spirit. He will reveal everything in heaven to you.
If you listen to the Holy Spirit you will not have any problems nor encounter any stumbling block in your life in this world. The flesh and its desires fight against the spirit. The spirit on the other hand wages war against the flesh. Galatians chapter 5 verses 17 and 18. Do you think the flesh will stand the battle of the Holy Spirit? When you hear of the war of Armageddon, it is the battle of the spirit and the flesh. This is the reason there is fighting everywhere. Right from this moment, if you listen to the Holy Spirit you are living with God. It is clear that it is not a man who recommends himself, who is approved but he whom God recommends. This is the time to please our Creator alone. If you do not please the Holy Spirit, it means you are not his beloved child and you cannot live. Our first Bible lesson stated that God is a spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The second Bible lesson advised us to walk in spirit because if we walk in the spirit we would not please the flesh. The children of this kingdom walk by the spirit and so please do not do anything by your own volition, do not beat your chest and say, I am. There is no reason to seek advice from anybody nor should we ask anybody to direct us because we have God who is prepared to instruct, teach, and lead us to the wisdom of the truth. Golden text, Acts chapter 10 verses 19 to 21 While Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. Arise therefore, and get thee down, and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Then Peter went down to the men which were sent unto him from Cornelius, and said, Behold, I am he whom ye seek, what is the cause wherefore ye are come? Brethren, the lesson you have heard is impossible for a carnal man to practice. This very text created confusion among the apostles of old because when our Lord Jesus Christ was on earth in his first advent, he did not direct his apostles to go unto the Gentiles. This is a proof that without the Holy Spirit the whole world would be lost. After his death and resurrection, he instructed his apostles to go and look for the lost sheep of the house of Israel, that is the Israelites only. When they went out on ministry work, they inquired to know if any Israelite was at the location they had arrived at, just as the churches who when they are on evangelical work, inquire to know about the whereabouts of only their church members. Note that Cornelius was a Gentile who traditionally had nothing in common with the Israelites. But the Holy Spirit directed Peter, an Israelite, to go and preach the gospel of God to him. Until doomsday, the gospel of God could not have been preached to the Gentiles, but for the intercession of the Holy Spirit. Before this time Peter had a dream in which he saw four-footed animals and he was instructed to kill and eat. He refused and replied the voice that instructed him that he had never eaten anything unclean. When Peter was disconnected from that revelation and was contemplating on the manner of the revelation and immediately there was a tap on his door, and it was the servant sent by Cornelius. God is love, God of all virtues. He has come to dwell with man in human form in order to unite the whole world in love and oneness. If Peter had been asked, at gunpoint, to go to the Gentiles, especially to Cornelius, he would never have agreed to accept the assignment, for the simple reason that Cornelius was a Gentile. When the Holy Spirit asked Peter to go to the Gentiles, Peter went because he believed in the Holy Spirit. From this illustration you will realize that the Holy Spirit does not send one to places where one likes, he will send one to places one hates or to places where one thinks one's life might be in danger of destruction. Here in this fold, why do visionaries direct people to go on missionary journey to battles and not to places where the gospel of God had not yet been received? If we listen to the directives of the Holy Spirit we will be able to overcome all the vices of this world. Our Lord Jesus Christ and all the apostles walked in spirit. But today we do not want to listen to the directives of the Holy Spirit. There was a place Paul went, and he was afraid, but the Holy Spirit assured him that he would not have any problems there. Our Lord Jesus Christ went to Jerusalem not because he liked going there. Paul also went to Jerusalem after which the Holy Spirit had revealed to him the impending imprisonment which awaited him there. The Holy Spirit does not hide anything from you, but if you exercise fear, you are sure to meet your doom. Why do you tell people to come to brotherhood in order to have money, children, and work? Is that all? Are you directed by the spirit or flesh to make such proclamation? Our Lord Jesus Christ said, And he that taketh not his cross, and followeth after me, is not worthy of me. 
Matthew chapter 10 verse 38. He also said, If any man come to me, and hate not his father, and mother, and wife, and children, and brethren, and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Luke chapter 14 verse 26. Why then do you go about asking people to come to brotherhood for material things? Whatever we do let us listen to the Holy Spirit and act exactly as he directs. Let us not add or subtract. Many of you in the art stations undertake your personal business after you have vowed to work for God. Know that you are deceiving nobody but yourself. In fact you are doing more harm than good to yourself. The Holy Spirit is urging you to go to the hospital in order to offer prayers for the sick, visit the prisoners and console them but you refuse. Instead you remain in your battles and you continue to sleep. When you listen to the Holy Spirit, you have no room for gossiping and fornication. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, My Father worketh, hitherto, I walk. John chapter 5 verse 17 The Holy Spirit in our midst walks around the clock but you who profess to do the work of God remain a sleeping dog in the different battles. The Holy Spirit does not approve of battles. Don't you see how you jingle the bell for morning service but you find nobody to attend? I told you emphatically since the year 1974 that there is no question of battles in the work of God but instead you build magnificent battle and you say, this is my battle. Remember that God had prophesied in the mouth of the prophets, Habit the most high dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as said the prophet, heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool, what house will ye build me? Said the Lord, or what is the place of my rest? Hath not my hand made all these things? Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost, as your fathers did, so do ye. Acts chapter 7 verses 48 to 51. But now every battle embarks on a building project. Therefore brethren, it is incumbent upon every one of us to act according to the dictates of the Holy Spirit for the true worshippers of God worship Him in spirit and in truth. I will not be tedious unto you. Those who have ears let them hear. May the Lord bless his holy word. Amen. Thank you Holy Father.